please like and subscribe and I hope you keep watching. In this video we will be making a Busilla ornament that actually matches the stocking that I just finished. So stay tuned and watch how I put this little ornament together. To start off we'll be working on piece 101 and piece 102 and we're going to attach 102 to the tail end of the airplane. Now we're going to work on piece 103 and it's going to be the trim of the wing and that's how it's supposed to be positioned. So we're going to put sequins on the trim and when that's attached there is a embroidery that goes in between right here. This is the trim piece before I embroider. I just wanted to show you what it looked like before I put the embroidery on and then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Here is the trim after the piece has been added. Just a simple outline stitch. And then we'll work on piece 104. So I went a little out of order and decided to grab piece number 106 and put that on. And that's what it looks like on. It was just a simple piece, no embroidery or anything. Um, but now, now I'm gonna put on 104. So I noticed that I forgot to bead and sequin the wing, so I did that real quick. Duh. Can't believe I forgot to do that. Anyway, so we're going to work on piece 104, and that's just a simple stripe with beads and a little bit of embroidery. And here's that piece, and I'm just going to add that onto there real quick. Here is the finished 104 piece with the embroidery. If I could do it again, I would actually add the trim after the stripe. The instructions told me otherwise, so I followed the instructions, but if I did it again, I would do it differently. 105 is the back of the wing, and it's a little confusing when you look at it, but basically you're going to sandwich it together. This is what the piece looks like with the backing on. You can actually see the dotted line. That's the correct way to do it because we're going to have to, that's our guide for the body of the plane. Here is the body, the, the front of the body of the plane and you, you'll be doing sequining and embroidery all over the front. This is before and I'll show you after it's embroidered. And the wing is going to go about here. It'll make more sense once it's actually attached. The finished body of the plane has all the sequins and the embroidery. And there is a little bit of a guide on the wing to kind of show you where the body is. For some reason the stamp on mine kind of faded after handling it a little bit. So I just kind of did a rough guess. That's about where I want it to be. We're not going to applique it in the seat part of it because that's where the presents are going to be added. I went ahead and appliqued that piece together and I did not applique it here for the reasons I stated before because that's where the presents go. Well, that's one present and the candy cane. And here's the back of it and you can see that there's a guide for the back of the body that we will be adding. But first we're going to look at 108. And I went ahead and beaded and sequined 108 and lined it up to match the dotted lines on the front as best I could. Sometimes they don't quite match, but you, you do your best. And then we're going to attach it. I noticed that once 108 was attached, it matched up a little bit better with the dotted lines, so it's not too bad. But now we're going to do 109, which is the nose of the plane. The two nose pieces are 109 and 110. We're going to be adding sequins to both and attaching 110 onto 109 before we attach it to the rest of the plane. So I'll do those off camera and show you what those look like together and they both go there. Here's piece 109, piece 110. I'm gonna 
applique those two together first and then add those to the ornament. Here's the finished nose onto the front of the plane and here's a close-up on the stitching. So proud of my beautiful stitching. <laughs> Comes with lots of practice. Anyway, we're gonna put the backing onto it now and that's gonna allow us to stuff our plain ornament so it gets a good 3D effect, which is my favorite. I love it when it comes alive. I'm gonna grab my polyfiber fill and there is a link down below for that. Before I begin stuffing, I really need to make the cord that is for hanging my, my ornament. And it's funny, in the instructions it says to make that first and then set it aside. Yeah, with three little kids running around, I don't really want to risk losing it, so I'm making it now. You take a piece of tape, and in this case I had some duct tape. Normally I use scotch tape or something, but I just happened to have some duct tape on my desk. So I'm like, okay, we'll just use duct tape. And then you twist it, take a pen, and let it go, and it creates a cool rope. And then we're going to fold that in half and that's going to be the loop to the ornament. And I just basically put it right by the plain wing to kind of give it a good balance when it hangs. And um, sew it in really good. So I'm going to sew it about three quarters of the way and then begin stuffing. I decided to stop right about the tail wing. I figured that's a good place to pause and stuff my ornament so it's a pretty good opening too I can actually get my finger in there and be able to squish it into all the little nooks and crannies that I want and then I'm gonna grab my stuffing and stuff and this is about the consistency that I want for for like firmness I like having firmer ornaments and stockings and so I tend to really generously stuff my projects so I have understuffed and I have regretted understuffing so I was able to completely stuff the main body of my ornament and right now it's kind of hanging crooked but it will level out once I put the other wing on and we're actually gonna work on the tail wing first the tail wing is 112 and 113 and 113 is going to be sequined and beaded and we're going to put those two together. Those are the two pieces together and they'll go right there. And I'm going to grab some poster board because we need some for the tail wing. And we're just going to trace kind of a a small piece to put in between and make sure to cut it down to where you can actually attach the back so here's the back we're gonna put it on the front and we're gonna sew in the piece of poster board this is about three quarters of the way around roughly there's the piece of poster board that's squished in between so I'm gonna finish putting that together and I'm gonna add it to this to the ornament and here is the finished tail wing. I'm making sure that the trim is sort of not quite level but like enough to where it looks like it should be on a plane. So it's pretty close. Now we're gonna work on the on the wing. Piece 115 is the second wing on the ornament. We're just going to add sequins and beads to it. Piece 116 is the trim of the wing. We're gonna add the sequins and beads to it first and then attach it to the wing. With 116 attached, it looks pretty good. We're gonna work on 117, which is another trim that matches the other wing. 
putting the sequins and beads on there as well as this as the little tiny embroidery section. Here is the completed wing that we will be attaching the back to and this piece also requires some poster board so here's the backing we're going to use the front to outline a piece of poster board to put in between these two pieces and make it stand up on its own. Alright, here's my poster board. Trimmed it down and we're gonna put these two together like a sandwich. And applique those two pieces with the poster board in the middle. And then attach it. So here's a rough guide. I usually stick like a a pin where I kind of want it and I want it to look like a plane so I'm trying to line it up so that it's not like straight but like kind of at an angle so it looks like we're looking at it at, at an angle and it's got like an arrow kind of direction you know what I'm talking about so here's the wing that's been attached and I like the way it looks I did do a couple of stitches back here just for safety reasons but that's the finished wing. And now when you pull on, when you hang it, it'll hang straighter now with the wing on there, which will look really nice. It looks like a cute little plane. It's so cute. <laughs> Next up is the propeller, number 120. And here's the two pieces that go together. That's the front, that's the back, and this piece also requires poster board. So we will be cutting out some poster board for this propeller. And I'm going to quickly embroider and sequin it. Here's the piece of poster board we're going to be putting in between our two propeller pieces. And I did trim it down quite a bit because especially towards the middle where it gets really narrow, you still want poster board there, but you don't want it to interfere with your stitching. So here are the two pieces put together. I'm pretty impressed. It actually turned out really well despite my little cardboard piece in there. So we're going to add that propeller onto the nose first and then the nose part. So here's the propeller completely attached. Just a couple of stitches in the middle because we are there is one more piece to put on top to give it some more security. So um, it's just a little round piece that we're going to add. We're going to put the sequin on first and then cut it out and then applique that piece onto the front. So this is what it looks like with that piece on there. Gives it a really great finishing look, which I love. It's super cute. So that's the finished propeller and the cute little beads and the embroidery. So darn cute. So we're going to actually next look at the... 125 which is the wheel part of it and here are the pieces for the front of the of the wheel here's the wheel and the pieces that go there so we're going to cut those out and attach those and here's a ref here's a guide to kind of show you the angles and everything With those two pieces attached, we can add the piece 124, and we're just going to sequin and bead the piece first, and then add it onto there. So here's that piece all done. That's the front, and these two pieces go on the back. So we're going to cut those out, attach those two together first, and then add it to the back of this wheel. All right, sandwich time. We get to attach these two together to make the wheel give it some more dimension. So I'm going to quickly applique those two together. And then with those two attached, we're going to add that to the actual ornament. The finished wheel with the backing on and there's the front. We're going to add that to the ornament with the matching maroon thread and here's what it looks like attached there's the back of it it only needs a few stitches 
Now we're gonna add the present and the candy cane. These three, last three felt pieces. Okay, quick tip about these candy canes. First of all, I don't like doing them, so I like to do them as easy as possible. And the best way to do it is to cut it out first. So cut it out and then embroider it because it's so much easier to, to gauge where your thread is going. I have accidentally cut thread, which is annoying. So that's a good way to avoid that is to cut it out first and then embroider your candy cane. And it does say to stuff it, but whatever. I'm not stuffing it. It's so small. Okay, so here's the two pieces that put the presents together and I quickly embroidered and sequined and put together the present and we're gonna actually stick them in the section where I did not applique. So I quickly put those two in with just a few stitches. You don't need that many to kind of secure it and just keep them in place so they don't move around. I can actually, you know, pull on it and it doesn't go anywhere. So. That is the completed ornament. Here's my finished ornament. It turned out so cute. I'm so excited for Christmas. <laughs> Even though it's July. <laughs> but I'm really excited when that comes. I can hang it on my tree. And there's the back of it. Nice and clean. Looks so good. I'm so glad it turned out so well. And I am filming in my front yard. It's actually so nice to have a front yard. Yep, that's my front yard. Isn't it beautiful? I'm gonna try and film out here as much as I can because the lighting is really great. So, but yeah, there's my front yard. So if you wanna see more projects like this, please like and subscribe. And any other tutorials that you haven't checked out, I'll link down in the description box for you guys to check out. And feel free to comment down below. I love hearing from you. I would love to start conversations with you, get to know you guys a little bit better. For my next video, I am planning on doing a wreath. And I have it narrowed down to two choices and I will let you know in my next video which one I decided to get so you guys can follow along and do it with me. So I hope to see you next time. Bye.